Thank you for that uh, generous introduction. Uh, I am honored to be here uh, in Hyderabad and in India. I want to acknowledge our hosts, colleagues. It's been a dream of mine since the time I was in college to come to India. And what a privilege it is to experience the thousand years of culture and art represented here. It's very inspiring. And I also want to say that I'm honored to participate in lighting the lamp of knowledge as we did this morning. I think that's what brings us all here. And it also helps me to see the connection among cultures. In the United States, in November, we are moving into our holiday period. And it's all about lighting lights at the darkest time of the year. And so to arrive here in India during the Festival of Lights, you know, really helped me to see this wonderful connection that we have. Also, Hyderabad has much in common with Chicago. Uh, I heard uh, this morning that Hyderabad is a place that north, south, east, west all come together. And that is exactly what Chicago is all about. It's called the Third Coast. We're on the coast of Lake Michigan, an inland sea. Uh, but we really bring together the east coast, the west coast, the middle west. It's a wonderful place. And I am really privileged to be the president of Governor State University in the Chicago area. The theme of this conference, Excellence Without Borders, is also something that is very, very inspiring. And then to hear the speakers who preceded me, it was as if we had sat down for weeks and planned together what to say. Because uh, it is so true that we need to be focused on early childhood education. We need to be focused on elementary education. We have to understand that answering questions at the end of a chapter, thank you for that, is not what uh, will prepare students for the world of the 21st century. So what I'd like to do very briefly is to map out the picture of knowledge information, information, knowledge, and wisdom, as we call it, and distinguish among them information, knowledge, wisdom. I had some pictures to show you, but we'll do it without pictures. If I need you to imagine a picture, I'll ask you to do that. We are bringing students together from around the world at a time of a revolution in education a true revolution. It puts the invention of the printing press into a minor event. We are now at a time of a revolution in epistemology, a revolution in the ways of knowing, a paradigm shift in the learning environment. And so, what we together must do for the future that is arrayed before us in the room, welcome students, we have to be sure that we are preparing our students for the 21st and 22nd century. So uh, let me just say that never before in the history of the planet has information been more available. With the click of a key, you can find the answers to just about any question. And when the questions are factual, based on common knowledge, we can be relatively confident of the answers. And here in India, where you're so far ahead in the whole digital revolution, uh, you have made it possible for the world at large to have that quick access to information. Let me make a distinction, distinctions among information, knowledge, and wisdom by using an uh, example from US history. So let, let's just start with that. Um, we all know 
that the 16th president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, he spent a lot of time in my state of Illinois, which is called the land of Lincoln. So you will forgive me for using this as an example. Now, if we don't know, we know that Abraham Lincoln was assassinated. He was shot in Ford's Theater. Now, if we don't know the date, click, 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 we've got it in about five seconds. And the date was April 15th, 1865. That is not under dispute. Now, what if we then say, well, oh, okay, what happened then? Uh, who was the next president? Click, click, click. The next president was Andrew Johnson. Oh, well, didn't something happen to Andrew Johnson? What was that? Click, click, click. He was impeached. Well, what does impeached mean? Uh, well, it means that he was indicted by the U.S. House of Representatives and put on trial by the U.S. Senate. Uh, was he convicted and removed from office? Was he convicted and removed from office? Now, if you all had your devices out, you could go click, 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 and you would find out no. He was tried by the U.S. Senate in the spring of 1868 and acquitted by one vote. Facts, information, not under dispute. However, that information may be at our fingertips and very easy to obtain. But what is the point of knowing any of that information? That doesn't really tell us much of anything. Doesn't tell us much about American history, doesn't tell us much about politics. So that's mere information, that's only information. All right, what would then constitute knowledge? I would suggest that knowledge would be the, the ability to assess and then integrate the information into a meaningful whole. And then if we want to take another step and say, well, what's the difference between knowledge, which is something we construct, we have to make knowledge out of information, then what is wisdom? I would say that wisdom is the capacity to apply knowledge effectively to new situations. That's how we become wise. That's how we can teach students to be effective in the 21st century. So let's quickly stick with the, stay with the Lincoln, and now the uh, Lincoln example and see what knowledge would mean. So knowledge about the US, United States 17th president would include an understanding of the challenges when he took office on the day of Abraham Lincoln's assassination. Now, if you know US history, it was the end of a bloody civil war. Uh, what was Johnson doing to overcome the bitterness and hatred and reconcile the North and South of the United States? That's a knowledge question. That's not an information question. You can't go click, click, click on that. Guess what? You have to think. You have to make judgments. You have to assess information. You have to do all of the things that we must be teaching at all levels of education and certainly at, in higher education. We also have to know, well, what happened during that impeachment trial of, uh, of President Johnson? Why was it that he was acquitted by one vote? Was it political expediency, or did somebody show a lot of courage? My husband happened to do his, his, his uh, master's thesis on the person who, vote, the one vote that uh, made it so that Johnson was not convicted. By the way, this is my husband, Dr. Mort Maiman. You stand up and greet everybody. So knowledge then would assess factual accounts and think critically about information and accurately reconstruct a long ago historical environment, make sound ju judgments about what happened and what did not, and finally integrate what is known into meaning and understanding. Now wisdom, ah wisdom. Wisdom goes even further. We have to ask, how do these long ago circumstances in the United States apply, well, apply to what? 
apply maybe to the aftermath of civil wars in other nations and in other times. So, what can we learn? How can we be wise as we study the aftermath of the United States Civil War to understand things like the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in South Africa and in other countries? How, does that connect to reconstruction, to the reconstruction period following the Civil War? And, and what about questions involve, involving slavery, which is you know, just the curse of the United States, that we were a nation that held people in slavery. It, it is a curse on what is a great democracy and something that the United States has had to struggle with uh, for, from its founding. So how do questions involving slavery, freedom, and human dignity, how are those evaluated within a context of history and culture or within a framework of universality. So wisdom applies concepts from one set of circumstances to very different contexts. We define the underlying issues, we consider ethical and moral implications, we make judgments, and we engage in problem solving. Well, that's a tall order for education, but it's the only Goal. It's the only order for education. Without that, what we do lacks meaning. So how do we create the complex learning environments that will transform communication of information into knowledge and wisdom? Well, we know quite a bit about how to do it, and I'm very proud to say that at Governor State University, we are award-winning an award-winning university in doing what I have just described. And I'll just give you some sense of what that means. We have to, first of all, construct connections between the World Wide Web and the classroom. Uh, we have to design courses so that students understand that when they're click, 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 clicking on the web, they have to make judgments. They can't say, well, I read it on the web, or here's what I found, that we have to, at every stage of education, make sure that students are thinking and making judgments. We also have to do uh, the phrases, replace the sage on the stage with the guide on the side. Now, here I am, standing here, and being a sage on the stage, uh, rather than a guide on the side that is encouraging interactive learning. I hope that through the rest of the conference, we will have opportunities for dialogue and conversation and uh, to uh, make sure that I'm not being hypocritical by saying that if we have too much lecturing, then it doesn't really work. We also need to infuse, integrate writing civic learning, ethics, visual literacy, problem solving, critical thinking, numeracy, into existing courses. We shouldn't be making discrete, separate courses for everything that a student should learn. We have to make sure that we are infusing these uh, very important abilities, as you said, skills, into every course that we teach. We also, uh, there's a literature about this. I uh, refer you to the uh, Association of American Colleges and Universities. Uh, they have a, a list of what are called high-impact educational practices. High-impact educational practices. And these are practices that will lead us to going from information to knowledge to wisdom. And so I will just refer you to those and then uh, really ask that all of us think about it and uh, apply it to our education. Now, it's so interesting to contrast the, the fact that today information is instantly available. If we go back to Lincoln and Johnson and the period of the US Civil War, it's astounding to realize 
that it took two years, two years, for the news that President Lincoln had signed the Emancipation Proclamation, which